Hey guys, it's Friday. I know it's not Sunday, but I have a word that's been burning in me for hours and I feel like I need to preach it right now. I can't wait until Sunday for this. And I've said so many times that I've said uh, to break up out of the box, break the mold, so I'm doing that. My sermon on this Friday afternoon is called Isle Markers. Let's pray. Father, I thank you and I bless you for the word you've given me. I thank you and I bless you for what I'm about to receive, God. I just praise you, God, because you are just going to do something wonderful through this word. I love you, I love all of you today, God. You are great, and you are greatly to be praised. In the name of Jesus, amen. Speak to me and speak through me, Father. In Jesus' name. Hey guys, I was just watching the Tim Ross podcast called The Basement. And what the basement is, is he, he has guests and he uh, starts, he t talks to those guests about different things. And if you don't know who Tim Roth is, he's a pastor in the U.S. He's a very well-known pastor. He speaks places too. And he was on with the sex therapist, um, um, talking about sex and marriage and all that. It was really good. And sex and, you know, relationships. And this therapist said something really good that really stunned me. He, she said, um, there is no des destination. The journey just keeps going on and on and on. We often talk about, and I've said this too in the past, um, that it's not about the destination, it's about the journey. But she said, but with her opinion, there is no destination. It's just the journey. We keep living, we keep loving, we keep learning, we keep growing until we die. And that's when the journey ends. And as I sat and thought about this, because every time I, I learn something new, I like to sit and think about it. So as I sat and thought about this, I thought about, um, there may not be anything, um, um, uh, anything like a destination, like we've somehow arrived somewhere someday. But there is mile markers, and the Lord, and the Lord brought to me. There might not be a destination where you, where you get to a certain place in your life where you've arrived, but there are mile markers. Like you, it's like you. For all you runners out there, like I've been, I've never run. I was really bad at wheelchair track, but as far as I know, there are mile markers where you can stop and take a drink, and then when you stop and take a drink of water, uh, you keep going after those mile markers, but if you don't stop, you can wear yourself out. He, she's like, he's like, Yes, life is a constant journey. There's no place where 
Well, when I get there, I'll be happy. When I get there, I'll be happy. When I get there, I can stop. When I get there, I can stop. He said, life is consistently a journey, yes. But there are mile markers that you need to stop and celebrate. So they're not destinations, really, where you could say, I've arrived. You can still, you, you still continue to grow and change, but there are mile markers where when you get to this place, you can stop and celebrate, or you could stop and, and learn from your mistakes. And the Lord is saying right now, some of you out there under the sound of this video, under the sound of my voice, are not stopping for the mile markers, are not stopping and learning, growing, changing, letting God minister to you in those mile markers, or um, stopping to celebrate your mile markers. You're so busy going from the next thing to the next thing. I need to get to my destiny. I need to get to my destiny. Where there, uh, where your destiny is more of a journey of change and growth. And your journey ends when you die. But if you don't stop and take stock at each mile marker, you'll miss the lessons that God has for you. And God is saying right now, there are mile markers in your life that he needs you to stop and take stock of them. He either needs you to celebrate them or he needs you uh, to learn and grow from them or he needs teach you something, or it may be all of those things in the same mile marker. So there may be a part of that mile marker where you need to stop and take stock and change and grow and learn, and there may be part of that same mile marker where you need to celebrate. Um, and he's saying, pay attention to the mile markers. Because sometimes each mile marker has a sign like, slow down, take stock, like, take stock, grow, change. I'm trying to teach you something, but you're so busy rushing past, trying to get to somewhere that is non-existent because, uh, Life is a continuous journey. Maybe wanting to get somewhere that you're too busy to stop and look at the mile markers and look at the lessons he's trying to teach you. And I've said this before. Um, in every... In every and every part of your life good or a learning part of your life or something that you need to grow from, there is a lesson. And the Lord is ask, telling you, if you read the signs of those mile markers and stop and take stock and stop and celebrate and stop to grow and stop to change and stop to learn. I will refresh you. A lot of time, a lot of times people are getting tired in the journey and it's not because they're not purpose to do that thing or whatever. It's that they haven't stopped at the mile marker to rest and take stock and learn and grow. And sometimes while you're moving, learning and growing happens, 
But most times, although the change happens when you're growing and doing life, most times he wants you to stop and really take stock of who you are and who he's called you to be and what the journey has in store for you. And he needs to, and he needs to minister to you. He wants to heal the brokenness inside you. He wants to do all of this great stuff, but you need to stop at the mile markers because he knows what he wants to minister to you. He knows the strength you need. And if you keep going and going like the Energizer Bunny, your batteries will run out. And a lot of times, it's not because we're out purpose to do that thing. It's not because we just don't have what it takes. It's because we're not stopping to refuel on his word. We're not stopping to refuel um, with with godly friends or godly people. We're not stopping to refuel. We're just going, 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 and we're, and we're working, 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 working. And he says, I need you to stop at the mile markers and rest and and grow and change and take stock of where you are in the journey. Take stock of the lessons that he's teaching you. Take stock of the places you need to grow. And that's what he wants you to know today. He says, it's not that he's not with you in the journey. And it's not because you're not purpose to do what you're doing. It's because you refuse to pay attention to the mile markers and the signs along the way that is telling you to slow down, stop, change directions. Because if you pay attention to those signs along the way, you will know what to do. If you stop for a second and rest and take stock and stop to take in the lessons, stop to take in your successes, stop to learn what, what he's been teaching you, your journey will, will be much more fruitful. And fruitful doesn't mean you spend everything. Fruitful means you know what you have in you and you know what time you can, what you can spend with what. A lot of people are wasting their time with things that God said, either that's over or you were not meant to do that at all. And that's what, what, what paying attention to the mile markers will do as well. It will tell you if you are on the right track, if you need to slow down, if you need to speak up, speed up or speak up. It will tell you those things. But if you refuse to read the signs, you'll just keep going and going until your energy and your battery runs out and you'll be no good to anybody. If you say yes to everything, when the important things come on, you'll have no energy to do those things. So, and the mile markers will let you know if you're on the right track, let you know which things you need to celebrate, which things you need to stop and smell the roses at. The mile markers will let you know that stuff, but you need to pay attention to, to the signs. Not only the spiritual, spiritual signs or emotional signs, but sometimes there are physical signs in your life that this mile marker is way too much. Your body's feeling run down. You're not sleeping, you're not eating, you're getting diabetes, hypertension, and all of that. And you're stressed out because your body's saying, 
whoa, I can't do this. We can't go on this space. We can't go on this space. This, go, go at the pace of grace. Go at the pace that God has graced you to go. Um, I believe um, Michael Todd has year, said years ago that God had to teach him to stride, not strive. Um, I believe that we are all graced for a pace in life, a pace that God has set for us. And sometimes we try to rush ahead of God, and sometimes we try and go behind God, being too scared to, to speed up and go at His pace. Follow the pace that God has graced you with. One of the downfalls of social media is that people look at someone else post, look at, oh, this person got married at 25 and I'm, I'm 35 and I'm not even dating anything yet. There's, there's something wrong with me. No, no, no. Beloved, there is nothing wrong with you. The, the thing is, you're not paced to go um, as fast as that, as that other person. That other person is graced to go at their own pace, even if they may be in the same industry as you. You could take some uh, tips from them, but it doesn't mean your life has to mirror theirs, or your kids have to mirror theirs, or your family has to do what they, they do. No, no, no. That's the pace for your family. That's the pace for their family, not yours. And that's the pace that they go for their career, not yours. Even if they're the same industry as yours, their path to get there, to get to, the, to where God is um, grace, to get to their mile markers is different than your path to your mile markers. And God's intention for each person, even if they go in the same industry, is different. See, I love Stephen Furtick as a pastor, but, and although I, I preach and one of my uh, visions is to be a pastor, I will never be <laughs> Stephen Furtick. I will never, like, I will never do that. That's what he does. And he's graced to do that for his life and his family. Now, I'm graced to do what I do for my life. And, and what, what it is is God needs all of us to do what we do because even if we're in the same industry, we can service different people. You know, although I'm a preacher, I can speak God's word to different people than Pastor Furtick can. And he can speak to the people that I will never be able to speak to because we are graced in different ways to speak in God's purposes in our lives. Now, I can't, I can't look at his Instagram and go, oh my God, I need to do that. No, I don't. I need to do what God has graced me to do. Now, I could, I could take suggestions or tips from him about maybe how to do a certain thing, but I don't have to... Uh, downright copy and try to, you know, get a 3,000 member church when my, when my whole congregation is like a hundred member, mem um, social media following. 
or a 50 member social media following or a 10 member social media following. I have to follow the markers of my own life because there are people out there that will respond to what I have that won't respond to what he has. Although we're in the same uh, industry, we have different gifts within that industry. Same thing with T.D. Jakes, same thing with, T with Sarah Jakes, same thing with Terry Roberts. And there is room for us all in whatever industry we're in, there's room for us all. We don't have to fight to get there and fight to get what he has and fight to get what she has. No, God has us where he wants us for our particular industry. So two real estate agents don't have to fight over uh, getting the same clients to the same house. You can just do what you do and they'll do what what they do and we can all we can all win there there doesn't have to be have to be your wins or my wins and your losses are my losses like we can all we can all coexist together so that's what the lord wants me to say today it doesn't have to be one wins and, and one loses. It's just diff we can both win in our different lanes. Like it, an eight person uh, watch for B is, is a win, whereas a million plus uh, person watch for him is a win. But it doesn't mean that what I have is less important than what he does. Pastor Ferdinand, I'm talking about. What I do is not less important than what he does. It's just different and different platforms and different ways of teaching and preaching the word of God. So guys, I'll see you. I'll see you later. Maybe I might maybe on on Sunday, but who knows? God is certainly doing something awesome and I'm game for whatever he's doing. So see you when I see you guys. Bye.